now sounding an alarm about agencies that are looking into illegal marijuana grows run by organized crime groups linked to China. And in Oklahoma, the State Bureau of Narcotics found that of the hundreds of farms that it has recently shut down, at least 80 percent do have ties to China. Stephanie Haynes joins us live to explain. Stephanie, you spoke to experts who say this is happening in rural communities. Marky, exactly. I spoke at length with the Oklahoma public information officer for the Bureau of Narcotics, and he says Oklahoma is one of the states that's really cracking down on this. And check out this drone video that the Bureau just released of the latest marijuana bust. And of the more than 1,000 busts of these illegal grow operations, he says at least 80% of them have links to Chinese transnational criminal organizations. And it's not just Oklahoma that's really stepping up. Other states are too. According to a report from the Wall Street Journal, they have cited cases in New Mexico and California. And then a report earlier this year from the Daily Caller cites an alleged leaked memo from the Department of Homeland Security that says as many as 270 of these illegal grow operations could be in the state of Maine alone. What? Well, we keep saying this. We've said this in the past many, many a times. Making recreational cannabis is not a good idea. Medicinal still needs a lot, a lot of research. But if you're going to make it legalized, only do it for medicinal and that it has safeguards that not just anyone can get a prescription for it. And that's the one of the major problems. And the thing about it is, you know, you've, you've had Governor Hochul, you have Mayor Adams saying, you know, that it's legitimate that we're going to get rid of this illegal pot shops throughout New York. And they haven't done it. They haven't really done it. They've shut some down. They've shut down a edibles uh, bakery, three of them. Uh, but I guarantee you they'll reopen back up somewhere else. Uh, but the thing about it is, it's not only smoke shops. These are del delis also as well. Because, you know, they're saying, well, you know, we, uh, we're trying to get with the landlords to shut them down or we'll find the landlords. But the thing about it is you get into a legal problem with that as well. Because someone that's going to rent a shop uh, from a landlord, you know, if they're not going to go the way of a smoke shop, they're going to say, oh, I'm opening a deli. Oh, okay. You know, you can't stop that from happening. You know, if they're doing something illegal and the police shut them down, then okay, you know, you eliminate their lease, you close their lease up, you, you know, to that situation. That's when you do it. You don't start to find the landlords because of the business that they're doing. You don't know, you know, you can't sit there and say, hey, listen, I've done everything due diligence. I've looked into the persons, I looked into their background and everything was clear. You know, you can't fault the landlord, you know, for, renting out their property. You can't, you can't tell them who they can and who they can't, you know, that becomes a, you know, a legal situation, but this is the things that they continue to do. They want to put blame on everyone, but the blame falls on our political leaders, our city councils, our district attorneys who are constantly, constantly thumbing the law, in our faces because they basically they arrest the wrong people and the people that they supposed to be held are released immediately back in the wild you know do you have situations where people have committed up to murder and they've gotten no bail and returned back but the thing is as they continue to shut down each of these illegal uh places uh, that's selling cannabis they're selling non-tax cigarettes they're selling edible illegal edibles they're selling vape pens that are illegal you know you you cut one two two more will crop up one has opened up in my neighborhood just recently and we're talking i'm in you know where i'm at is in a tight place there are not that many stores the stores that are here you know the delis that are here are far in between you know, we have a bar, we, you know, we have a couple, uh, about, what is it, uh, three delis within this range. And now they've opened a smoke shop 
on there just right in the middle of nowhere that they know that they'll be able to sell it because we are in a high minority area where basically we already have a marijuana issue going on here prior to the legalization of this and we do have a drug problem you know also a fentanyl problem we do have a heroin cocaine problem in this neighborhood it's a constant situation but we're going to read into this um, because New York City doesn't know what to do. They, they think they could raid it, raid it. But these guys are reopening it. And the thing about it is you have to remember the one major part of this that people don't read. Where is this illegal cannabis coming from? It's not coming from the legitimate places. This is coming from illegal pot farms that are run by Chinese and uh, Mexican cartels throughout the country. I mean, the closest one we got is up in Maine where we have a situation up there as well. So let's read into this. Rogue New York City pop shops open a week after raids w- w- with one still selling marijuana. A pair of illegal pot shops busted by the NYPD last week has reopened with one worker boasting about the brazen move to the New York po- to the Post on Tuesday while touting his store's illicit wares. We were closed the day it happened. We reopened the next day, back in business, said the employee at Gas City Exotics in Queens. Beneath the shop, glass countertop, and open dis- open, openly on display were rows of joints, edibles, and other marijuana paraphernalia, all easy visible through the store front windows. The products are right there for everyone to see. It is not a secret, the worker said. Gas City was busted back on March 4th by the NYPD's Cannabis Cost Task Force, uh, as was the Metro King Deli just steps away down in Middle Village Block. As with Gas City and Metro King Deli was open when the Post visited Tuesday, but no weed was to be seen on sale. Both shops were temporarily shuttered after the cops seized pounds of marijuana and cannabis products, which they were selling without a license, just just two of the roughly 2,000 rogue pox shops. Uh, it's estimate, it's a lot more, it's a lot higher than that. Estimate to be operating throughout the city. Though weed shops appear to be on every corner in the Big Apple, there are just 35 across the five boroughs that have been properly licensed by the state to operate. And there's still more lawsuits coming on as far as that. That means most shops on the streets are selling unregulated, untested weed cutting into the businesses of honest sellers who have followed the proper steps to joining the, the burgeoning market. We've made, we are 1 million into this, said Osbert Aruna, the co-owner of the Cannabis Place, a shop legally opened with a license Saturday in a stunning uh, renovated bank just around the corner from Gas City and Metro King. While Arunda has poured money into his business and weathered the process of becoming licensed with the state, he said there are at least six illegal shops flouting the rules and operating within a one-block radius of the shop. I was shocked and appalled to see the brazenness and the complete disregard for not only the law and regulations, but also for the community, Arunda said. They pretend that these storefronts are legal and they got raided and they just restock the shelves and open the next day and that's the truth on that they're going to restock because they're going to continue to get from the chinese dealers and the um cartels from from mexico they're really trying to pass themselves off like a business as usual oh we're a normal establishment uh the sheriff was here yesterday seized a bunch of stuff don't worry about it just come back in it's all good and it's not he said this is what the legislature needs to act and change the power of municipalities to padlock these places once and for all, Arunda added. It's not going to happen. Since the sale of weed was legalized in New York in 2021, the slow rollout of the cannabis business in the state has come with vague enforcement laws that are supposed to fine stores between 10000 and 20000 per day if they continue to sell without a license after being busted. But the laws have lacked teeth to permanently shut down these offenders, only one illegal shop permanently padlocked over repeated offenses and lawmakers fear pow- powerless to intervene. 
The enforcement is a total farce. This is a mockery of the judicial system, said City Council Bob Holden, who represents Middle Village and was presented present for the raids last week. We should have a padlock the law padlock law in place, he said. The, the state lawmakers who approve marijuana law should be voted out of office for failing to address enforcement of the black market. This is happening in my wonderful neighborhood and we can't do anything about it. Outrageous Holden said said he is concerned about edibles resembling candy and being sold out of the shops. The cannabis edibles look like candy and being marketed to kids, the councilman said. City Hall has referred the recent comments made by Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams about the need for a tougher state law that he would make it easier to padlock illicit pot shops, which Governor Kathy Hockle has uh, proposed. It is not enough to support the opening of new legal cannabis shops. We also must close down the illegal operations that threaten the success of legal shops and put the safety of our communities at risk. We have been clear in our call to state lawmakers to give us the power to shut down illegal smoke shops and we'll continue to work with Governor Hochul and all of our par partners in Albany who are fighting to give us the authority, Adam said. In the meantime, the mayor's cannabis task force includes Sheriff Anthony Miranda has imposed nearly 90 million in penalties, including an estimate 29 million in illegal product seized and more than 61 million in civil fines issue. But see, the thing about it is, as we reported, none of these fines have gone to court. They've not really gone to court. The city has also sent letters to 408 landlords across the five boroughs warning that they could be legally liable for the continued unlicensed sale of cannabis or tobacco products by their tenants. Some landlords have moved to evict the unlicensed pop pellet. But see, the thing about it is, and I'm going to tell you this situation. Unlicensed tobacco has been happening for decades now. Nothing has been done to curb. We've had ATF come in. We've had local and law enforcement have come in. But still, it has it. Take it from someone who has worked in this business. My family for many years have, had, have worked selling nicotine, so selling uh, cigarettes and candy for many years. We got out of the business because of the illegal trade, because we couldn't make any money. The illegal trade continued to increase and nothing was, was being done. There were many times that we, we as a company, were inspected by ATF, by state regulators, to make sure we were within the law because they had people um, calling in saying that we were selling illegal. They never found anything illegal of our business at all. We had our stamps. We were, with, were legitimate. We, we um, worked with ATF and many others. And we've told them, we've told them, this is our competitors who basically don't want us in business. We were the legitimate part of the business. They did not want us in legitimate and they drove us out of business. That is the situation. And that's what's going to happen here. I'll tell you, how do we solve this? How do we solve this situation? Plain and simple. Find out where this cannabis is coming from. Find out exactly, and this is how it is. It has to be transported in, into New York which basically would be make it illegal because basically there are states above us and below us that don't have cannabis laws in, in effect. And if they have an illegal pot farm out there, they, they don't have a license to be growing the, the cannabis. So they need to go after this. See, once you dry out the inventory, which is it's going to be very hard to do, this is going to have to be state and federal as a joint task force to handle this. The first thing you got to do is make it illegal once again for recreational cannabis. I'm sorry to say that if you want you if you want to grow it yourself, because basically the cannabis that's being sold illegally out there is a danger. You know, I, I have a lot of people who come on bit shoot on the comment line. And it goes, oh, it's safe, it's natural, all that. It's not the same drug. And the people that are growing this cannot be trusted. These are the same people that are feeding fentanyl into this country. Think about that for a minute. 
Look on the streets of Philadelphia, New York, San Francisco, Seattle. Look at the streets on there, the people, the drug addicts on there. Oregon, and we just reported this last week, Oregon has has gone back because they had made um, drugs legal. Now they've, they've unlegalized drugs in the state of Oregon. They've decided it's only just increased our situation and problems throughout the state. So tell me in the comments below your thoughts about this. Let me know, you know, about, you know, should we de uh, delegalize this? Uh, should we be going after the, the true uh, problems in there, the, the Chinese growers and the cartels that are in? And this is not coming from the across the border. Remember, these are grow houses within the United States. Maine happens to be one of them. Los, An Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, Colorado. There are many places throughout the country and we're talking inside homes that marijuana is being grown, cultivated, uh, ingredients added to it, shipped out and being sold in these illegal places. And the other question is where are they getting these untaxed cigarettes and vape pens? and the vape pens itself. Remember that. So comment, subscribe, like, share. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you for tuning in and bye-bye now. Thanks for watching, commenting, and sharing this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe as this helps the reach of this channel. Finally, as a content viewer, you have the ability to help support this channel as new internet laws around the world will diminish our reach and affect our sponsors. If you choose to help, there are two ways listed in the description below. The first link will lead you to a pay site where you can make a monetary donation. The second will lead you to our gear shop where you can buy shirts, mugs, and other gear. Discounts will be listed on the site. Once again, thank you for watching and your support.